How's it going everyone, Brodos I'm here. So uh, developer Seatert has published the second part of his Mastic Core exploit article which documents attacking the compiler process while the first part was about application process uh, which is escaping the uh, emulator. So uh, Seatert says the emulator consists of two separate processes. We have so far taken over the application process, but need to also take over the compiler process in order to be able to run arbitrary native code on the PS5 and also the PS4 because uh, they both have uh, the same uh, built-in PS2 emulator. So uh, the master core exploit is apparently made of two parts and both of them together create one complete exploit that can be used to run arbitrary native code execution on the PS5 and PS4, which means the possibility of running PS4 homebrew apps or even games on the uh, PS5 and uh, PS4. Uh, Macaulay's implementation achieved PS2 native code execution on the PS4 and PS5. That's why we were able to run PS2 games on the PS4 uh, with the Master Core exploit, but this is about native code execution on the PS4 and PS5. Uh, Seatert then shows us three vulnerabilities in the PS2 compiler code that helped him achieve native code execution. Uh, the first one was uh, initially spotted by Andy the Flow, uh, and later on Seatert says that the third vulnerability is the best one to use. Vulnerability 3 is much more attractive. With out of bounds write vulnerability 3, it is guaranteed to corrupt uh, instruction mapping cache in the in the heap so uh, he's basically telling other developers what vulnerability to use and that will save them time and make their job a bit easier when they try to fully implement uh, this exploit he also said uh, it could be possible to develop this into a complete exploit and he gave short summarized steps on how to do that uh, towards the end of the article seater talks about PS4 update 10.00 and PS5 6.00 which patches this exploit but not entirely and uh, how he was right about this bug being unpatchable even on the latest firmwares. Uh, it leaves privileged code with no readily available mechanism to be patched. PlayStation decided not to redesign their security model Instead, they have accepted the reality of JIT compiler processes potentially being permanently compromisable and attempted to limit the consequences of this. I believe their main concern regards the theoretical scenario of this being used to load patched retail PS4 games. So apparently what happened here is that PlayStation was afraid that people will be able to use this exploit to run PS4 games on the latest uh, PS4 firmwares. So what they did is that they limited the size of applications that can run with this exploit to only 64 megabytes on PS4 10.00 and PS5 6.00. The patch limits the game's size to 65 megabytes. So you cannot run any game or app that is higher uh, bigger than 64 uh, megabytes on those uh, firmwares 10.00 PS4 and 6.00 PS5. However, however, Seatert said there are two tricks to bypass this limitation and run apps larger than 65 megabytes and therefore he proves once again that this is indeed not a patchable bug only because PlayStation refused to, or just chose not to fully redesign their security model and just chose to uh, limit limit the consequences instead they just limited the size of the games so uh, the conclusion of all of this as concluded by Seater himself there is a reasonably good chance that with enough motivation the vulnerabilities described in this post could be exploited to take over the compiler process Taking over the compiler process means a full implementation of this exploit, meaning compiler process, application process, together they create one complete master core exploit and therefore the exploit would allow arbitrary code execution on the latest firmware 
of the PS4 and PS5, allowing native homebrew applications to be run off USB storage, for example. So we're talking about PS4 homebrew apps running on the PS4 with the Mastic Core exploit through a USB storage. He furthermore uh, theorizes that uh, it could be possible. So uh, he said, even with the mitigation Sony shipped in response to this research to limit the size of applications that could be run, I still believe it would be possible to run larger applications, albeit with a performance overhead of them being partially emulated or dynamically paged in and out. With the amount of work required, I don't realistically think we'll see polished demos or of Linux or retail PS4 games running, but it's fun to think that there is a good chance that theoretically those things might at least be technically possible. So there you have it, that's his conclusion. He uh, thinks it is theoretically possible to run PS4 games with the Master Core exploit from a USB drive. So. Yeah, that's that's the conclusion of all this uh, all this uh, uh, article. Uh, he also has like uh, five new bugs. Yes, five new bug bounties on the Hacker One website, uh, and I'm not sure if one of them will be disclosed since he shared this publicly. So five uh, bug bounties on the Hacker One website. At least one or two of them could end up being a PS4 kernel exploit that could lead to a new PS4. Uh, jailbreak so that's all for today uh, if you like this video if you enjoy this content make sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button uh, to stay updated so yeah that's it take care see you soon